Ricardo asks, Shakira or Sofia Vergara? Ooh. 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 I know where you leaning. Oh. I know how you leaning. What's up, players? What, what is, is Zen Dude Nation? What is up, Zen Dude Nation? Zen Dude Nation! Oh, wow. Brandon, you want to tell the audience what kind of glasses you oh, have? Oh, these are now? psychedelic glasses. I actually, fun fact, I didn't know they made psychedelic glasses. They did. If you put these on, it's the equivalent to being on LSD. So if I'm a little wild this episode, that, that explains it. Exactly. Except it won't last 10 hours. <laughs> you can just take them off. <laughs> your... Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Ask the Zen Dudes. I believe it's episode five. Episode, episode five. five. You asking the questions, we bring the answers. Question number one, Tanvir, my dude, always asking good questions. Mm -hmm. What about life makes you truly proud of yourself right at this very moment that makes you go, yes, at least I have this. Nothing can put me down now. Okay. My health, man. I always think about that. If I can go move mm. my body and just be completely free with my limbs and not have any injuries or like issues with my health, like what what else do you need? Yeah, dude, I wasn't thinking about it that way. That's a great answer. Honestly, guys, mine's Zen Dude Fitness. Like this, this whole movement and revolution, this is an obsession. Like I'm obsessed with this group. We're both obsessed with like what's going on here. So obsessed. obsessed. I mean, you obsessed. have to be like in terms of yeah, so in terms of being like proud, I would just say like putting my life into into Zen Dude Fitness, what we're doing right now. Daniel asks, nice name by the way, what inspired the name Zen Dude Fitness? Interesting question, Brandon, go ahead. The way I remember it is we were sitting around in Dan's apartment in Austin, Texas. I lived up a few floors and I came down to kick it. And we're like both doing fitness companies at the time. I was doing entrepreneur fitness, you're doing base jump. And we were like, yeah, what if we did something together? And you know, there might have been some Mary Jane in the room being passed around a little bit. So the mood was set. And uh, I think we were just like, yo man, what would we call it if we were gonna do it? And we're like, well, we're, we're dudes. <laughs> we're pretty zen. You know, we're gonna be zen dudes. And the way I remember in my head is at the same time, we go, zen dudes. Yeah. And Dan was sitting on the couch in front of me and I was uh, standing behind him and then we high fived. And then we were like, all right, oh, we gotta do this. You even got the location right of where we were. Bro, special moment. Listen guys, he's absolutely right. I, I love when people try to make the way that their company name, like the super important, like, well, it was named after, you know, my, my father's father's mm. uh, whiskey distillery in Tennessee, or like, I don't know why I use that. Like just something, the, something my, ridiculous. My family heirloom. Yeah, literally, we came up with the name Zen Nude Fitness because we we're smoking a joint, laughing our asses off, and we knew we wanted to start a company, but we were like, what would that company be, be called? And we were like, Zen Dude Fitness! Manaj asks, guys, I wanted to know your opinion on jumping rope with, with wrist weights. Because when I check on the internet, there's not much positive search that comes up about the topic, and I wanted to know your opinion. So again, what do we think about wrist weights when jumping rope? Don't do it. Don't do it. And we say don't do it guys, because honestly, that's just a way of like, you know, you think you need another gadget, but really instead of having resistance like taped to your wrist, you just need to spin the ropes. Use the heavy ropes. If you want some yeah. resistance, get the heavy ropes. Yeah. Don't mess around with your joints like that by putting <clears throat> weights in your wrist. Instead, just get the heavy ropes. And also just concentrate on spinning it faster so you get the workout from that. And asks, what inspired you to look outside of the box for a quote unquote job you love? Great question, man. Brandon, go ahead. I just always wanted to do what I wanted to do for as long as I can remember since I was, yes, basically I was just always kind of thought to myself like, yo, I just want to do stuff that's fun. I could never imagine doing something I didn't want to do. So for sure. I think too, like mine was involved a lot of pain. Like mine was more driven by like what caused me to look outside for the box to do Zen Nude Fitness, like what I love was honestly just my inability to sit at work. Like, like to some people sitting at like a regular job and doing it is like, you know, it's pretty good, whatever. Yeah. Oh um, my God, for I me, sit there. Dude, for me, it was like, it felt like suicide. Like I would get so depressed, of just like sitting at this cush job making great money. But like in my head, it was so torturous for me that that pain was like, 
Dan, you can't take this like one more day. Like you have to go follow your dream because like there's no way that this is gonna, like you're not gonna continue to do this for 40 years. So you need to figure something else out. Sidhu asks, what happens if you stay in a very low calorie deficit without hitting your recommended protein? Great, 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 great. Yo, my man. So as we already talked about before, protein is the building block for muscles. If you're not getting enough protein on your body, if you're not getting enough protein in your body, you're gonna have a hard time maintaining the muscle you have and you're definitely not gonna be gaining any extra muscle. And what we also know is that when you have more muscle, you have a higher resting metabolic rate, which means it's gonna be easier to stay lean. So yo man, get your protein. Get your protein. Get your protein. Tommy asks, have you ever had dry needle therapy to help recover from muscle injury? I don't know what that is. I don't know what it is either. I think you might be talking about acupuncture. Um, for muscle injury, man, I would check out our how to prevent injury for jumping rope. My apologies, dude, we're not doctors, so I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Bro, I don't know, man. I think it has something to do with like therapy, with needles. Bro, I just, uh, it matters. <laughs> Adam asks, is there an app you guys use for timing yourself during the workouts? Yeah, we about to launch an app. <gasps> guys, so we're, we're launching the Zen Dude Fitness app. Right now, we use one called the Pocket WOD Timer, but, we are launching the Zen Dude Fitness app, which is gonna mm. include not only a timer, but a bunch of great other features where you guys will be able to create your own workouts and have the timer, the video tutorial going along with it. That's gonna be out, like how much time? It'll be out within two to three months. Ricardo asks, Shakira or Sofia Vergara? Ooh, ooh. I know where you leaning. Oh. I know how you leaning. I'm, this is a, the, probably one of the hardest decisions of my life, I'm gonna say Shakira. This is a tough one. I'm going to Sofia Vergara, you know? I like the little little older women. Oh yeah, her. you do. You know, a little spanky spank. <laughs> William asks, I have some older age lower back issues. I usually jump rope on the concrete. Would it be better to jump on a slightly padded flooring or is it all about <clears throat> the types of shoes worn during the exercise? I think the least amount of uh, resistance that you'd be putting on your joints is gonna be the best for you. So definitely you have a slightly padded like what mat or something to jump on that'd be good. If you're gonna be wearing shoes with like a little bit of like cushion to them, it's gonna help as well versus like using like Converse's or something that's just completely like flat sole. So there's a few things you can do. The answer is both. You shouldn't be on concrete, although yes, Brandon and I do jump a lot on concrete, so we make sure to have very supportive shoes. Ideally though, to avoid the least amount of impact, you should be on like a rubber gym floor <clears throat> mat. You can do it in uh, like a gymnasium floor, which is like the wooden flooring. You can buy a yoga mat and jump rope on that. And then also I would say for on the sneaker side, my personal favorites are the Nike Lunar Series because they're super comfortable. You can buy high tops and low tops. The Nike Cruise are another ones that I jump rope in. Um, just any shoe that's like a runner shoe or has a very supportive sole. So doing both of those things, if you can, is gonna mitigate any issues that you're gonna have with, with pain in your- Yeah, we gotta elbow. mitigate it. Mitigate the, mitigate pain, the pain, my dude. Carlos Ooh, asks- The king. I'm down from 295 to 240. Dude, hell yeah, that's what I'm talking about, Carlos. That's my dude right there. I love that guy. Should I readjust my macronutrients to a 240 pound man trying to get lean thanks? Yup, yup. Andres asks, how should I break down my macros? I've seen conflicting studies that people with heavier builds should go more fats than carbs, and I've also read the opposite. What do you guys recommend? Yo, Andres, don't get stressed about this, man. Just plug your numbers into the calculator that we have and it's gonna tell you how much to have and you can adjust from there because everyone's different. Some people do better on higher fat, some people do better on higher carb. And if you just have to figure that out, so you start eating what a calculator gives you and then slightly adjust the fats and carbs until you find that sweet spot. Exa Brandon hit the nail on the head. So guys, everyone's, pers everyone's body is different. The only way that you get to know how your body processes certain nutrients is you have to experiment on yourself. So when you read the opposite or conflicting information on the internet, that actually kind of makes sense because they're probably testing different groups of people and everyone's body's gonna react differently. So I would, I would do exactly what he said, go to the calculator, use the numbers that we give you in there as a starting point and as a reference. And if you see that, you know, hey, I'm starting to lose more muscle in this area, and as long as you're eating at those consistent macros, then we can go back and say, okay, maybe you should actually adjust and have higher carbs, lower fat, or vice versa. Brada Ben. I don't know if this is Ben Brada or if I can call you Brada. Brada Man. Brada. Woo! 
Bra. <gasps> Sorry, I don't mean to offend you if like your name's just Brada and we're like sitting here like just calling his it's name. Your cool. option on fitness trackers such as the Fitbit, worth it or a waste of money. Man, it's a distraction. It's what it is. If if you were a competitive runner and you wanted to use a Fitbit to like actually be able to dial in your like heart rate or the how much like energy you're burning, cool, that might be helpful for you. But if you just want to like get lean and have the Zendu physique, not necessary. Dude. I'm trying to keep this in because I get emotional about this question. No, no, no. Because some people, dude, some people, first of all, no, it's not worth the money. It doesn't matter. Some people spend all their time tracking their little calories on their like little gadget iPhone thing. And they're like, oh, how much did I burn? Whatever. The, what they don't concentrate on is, is going hard and just being as intense as possible and hitting their mm. calories and macronutrients. You don't need all these gadgets and things to like, tell you how much your workout's burning, like what's gonna tell you how much your workout's burning is by looking in the mirror and seeing results, okay? So you have to go at an intense pace. Don't waste all of your other headspace using gadgets that only give you a little bit of information that you don't have enough time to do something with it anyway. Do the workout. Distraction. Eat in a calorie deficit. You're gonna look sexy. Mindy, cheat day versus cheat meal. To cheat meal, to me, cheat meal sounds better. Should we eat less calories throughout the day if we know we are going out to dinner with family or friends? Okay, many, the most important thing is just the total amount of food that you're eating throughout the day. So don't worry about having cheat meals. Just think about the amount of calories and macronutrients you have to use. So if you want, you could like, you know, eat low calorie foods earlier in the day and then go out for dinner and having a big delicious dinner and like indulge yourself. Like that's completely okay, but you have to eat less food in the morning. So don't think about it like cheat day versus cheat meal. Just eat the foods that you want and make them fit within like a budget of calories you have for the day. Yeah. And to that point, dude, I think like we each, you and I probably have at least one, like not, not at least, we probably have one cheat meal a day. Like if yeah. we're, if we're talking about a cheat day versus a cheat meal, we talked about this on the last episode. So check that out if you haven't. Um, we view things as like, if you just hit your total number of calories and macros, and you get a lot of vegetables and fruit, then you can technically have a cheat meal, yes, every single day. Because you're not indulging yourself and over overusing a lot of your calories. So don't think about, I, I would actually, I'm, we're both people who promote the idea of stopping this idea of a cheat day and just eating cheat meals whenever you feel like it because most of your diet is comprised of good vegetables, uh, fruits, lean proteins. And, and the other 30% is for gummy worms. Exactly. That's okay. Exactly. Cola, is jump rope a good exercise for women? How much should we do it? I don't want to have a very lean upper body. Go. It is a fantastic exercise for women. Mm -hmm. How much should you do it? The same amount as guys do. So follow all the things on our, all the workouts and stuff on our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to have a very lean upper body. That all has to do with your nutrition. So if you don't want to do that, go to our calculator and type in maintain your weight and hit those numbers in my fitness pal. Gustavo. You guys are always drinking fruit water from different fruits on several videos. Correct, very observant, thank you. Tell us more about it. Parentheses, calories, comma, benefits, comma, best fruits, how to do, dot, dot, dot. Cheers from Brazil, my dudes. Thank you, Gustavo. Madu, Madu, Madu. What's up, man? Madu. We actually made a video showing how to make fruit water. Oh, we that's did. That's a vlog we did. Yeah. So that's available. But beyond that, there's- What's it called? Do you remember? We'll have to link it. We'll link okay, it. we'll link it. We'll link it down. Link it. Uh, regarding the calories, uh, there's really not much because we're just soaking it in some fruit for a little bit and fruit is already super low calories. So I don't think it's anything more than like what would break your fast. I think it, in general is going to be yeah. less than 50 calories always, even if you're drinking like a big bottle. Yeah. Um, benefits, it tastes great. And, um, that's the main benefit and it forces, it doesn't force you, but it makes you want to drink more water, which is always good. Yeah, and of course, whatever nutrients do make it into the water, you get those nutrients from the fruit. So keep drinking fruit water. Fruit water. Siraj asks, intermittent fasting daily or take a break once in a while? Mm. Take a break once in a while. Or don't, actually. I do whatever you want. Dude, yeah. I took a break yesterday. Yeah. Awesome Colombian breakfast. 
And it was fun. I was with my friends. So, got to Yeah, guys. and do it at least once a week. You just gotta make sure you hate your overall numbers and do intermittent fasting if that's a helpful tool. And if you wanna take a day off, take a day off. Ace, this is a long one. Okay, but well, we're gonna answer it. So, bear with me, ladies and gentlemen. I've got, Ace asks, I've gotten to the point where I can do regular bounce consistently at a pretty fast place pace and other basic I'm gonna shorten this and other basic moves such as but you know boxer tip side straddle so since the name of the game is intensity my question is do I get a better workout if I just keep doing regular bounce at a hard pace or do I benefit from changing it up even if it means that I have to go slower when I transition to the other moves awesome channel guys mad props from the Philippines thank you my dude it's a good question man I think this is just your personal preference honestly I think if you're worried that you're not getting the intensity in because you're trying new tricks, like I would, if I'm if I was you, I'd just try to incorporate them as fast as you can. And as you improve your skill set, you'll be able to just up the intensity. But I don't know, from my personal experience, when I was learning new tricks, I felt like I was like working harder, even if I went slower, because I was like being super intentional and like kind of holding more tension in my body somehow. You know what I mean? So I think Could it's be. up to you, man. What do you think? Could be. I think I would agree with you, except if you're messing up a lot. If you're messing up a lot, then I would just focus on becoming awesome at regular bounce and going super hard because not only is that going to make the tricks easier, but it's going to ensure that you get a high calorie burn too so you're not wasting a workout. Jose asks, weed after or before the workout and some exercises for your butt, please. <laughs> you guys, so, let me ask, <laughs> so can I smoke weed and I need some ass improvement exercises. All right. So, um, man, you can smoke weed whenever you want. You know, you're an adult, so you do whatever the heck you want to do. You actually might be a kid, but... Jose, you're, you're seven years old. I don't know. Sorry, no. you're seven. Don't smoke weed. If you get into the dojo, both the courses that are available have a lot of butt exercises specifically. I don't know if we have anything on YouTube right now, but if you want to join the dojo, we have, uh, we have tutorials for like every type of leg and butt exercise. Yeah, guys, honestly, like... Some days I prefer to smoke some weed like before a workout because that's how I get into a really great zone. But first of all, marijuana in some places still is illegal, so we're not promoting the use of marijuana. Is it something that Brandon and I use? Hell yeah, dude, because it's way healthier than alcohol and it can help to induce certain states that actually just improve, like for example, improve your workout, improve your workflow. So we as improve men- Improve as the Improve as the Zen dudes, very true. We smoked a little bit of marijuana before doing this show. And also, we just always promote over everything, guys, self-awareness. Brandon and I are not the kind of guys who smoke weed and then are like, oh yeah, let's like go get some pizza or whatever. Like, that's not why we use marijuana. We use marijuana to get in a, a more relaxed and calm state so we can continue doing the work that we were already, like we can, t- we can continue working hard, which is what we were already going to do. So. I would say if marijuana affects you in a way that doesn't make you want to work out, then don't do it. For others who it can help get into a more flow state while you're exercising, I'd say a little bit before is fine. And then lastly, smoking a little bit after a very strenuous workout has been shown um, to actually benefit someone, especially if you're like a bodybuilder. Lilia, Lilia, Lilia asks, what do you guys usually eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Do you cook for yourself regularly? Also, would you make a video about counting macros and calories, how to do it, some tips, apps you use, something like that, smiley face. Her name is Lila, Lila. I said that. You said Lilia. I didn't say that. Lila. Dan, this is Lila, Lila. This is exactly why we created the dojo. There's sometimes we receive questions like this or we receive emails where people want to know like, really what is the whole system behind like figuring out calories, macros, getting workouts, tutorials, like everything you need, knowing exactly what you should have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's why we created the dojo. And if you go to the YouTube channel, we create tons of videos like individually, but the system is what the dojo is. So literally the best thing I could do right now, like the best resource to point you to would be the dojo. So check it out and- Links. Nicholas asks, D and B, what were your experiences when starting starting jumping rope to obtain your goals? Was it sweet, sour, salty, or bitter? I like the way you asked that. Um, I just think about food when I think about sweet, sour, salty, and bitter. It's been all the, I eat like foods that are sweet, sour, salty, and bitter, so it's kind of been all those. Yeah, I feel like that, I don't really know how to answer that question. 
my answer to that question was it was all of them because I had a period of time where like, like guys, we weren't just good at jumping rope right away. Like there was a time period where like I could not jump rope. Like I couldn't do regular bounce for a long time. Like I kept tripping and it was super mm. frustrating and it sucked. And then guess what? You do the thing for like a really long time until you're just really good at it. And then it got sweet and uh yeah, That's so just, the point is just do it. Just yeah. do it until you're good at it. Jump rope is kind of like life. I guess it is all sweet, sour, salty, and bitter. You know, you just go in these cycles. You yeah. have these experiences. You jump rope, and you get better, and you get excited, and then you try the next skill, and like you can't do it, and you get frustrated, and then you figure it out, and Hey, that's life for you, huh? That's life. <laughs> Carlos, I'm having trouble being consistent. Sometimes I feel super motivated and will go on a streak, but then one day I stop working out for days, even weeks. Oh, what do you recommend for this type of problem? Carlos, you just have to do the thing, man. Listen, we could give you some kind of motivational or like inspirational talk right now and get you pumped up and get, and get you feeling like motivated to work out right now, but that's not sustainable. What's sustainable is you just deciding for the rest of your life that this is what you want. And if it's not what you want, you're gonna prove that every day of not doing the thing. If you, and if you wanna believe otherwise, it's not. It all comes down to your decision to either do the thing or not do the thing. And there's no one else who has any control over that except for you. Dude, you can watch all the YouTube videos in the world that you want, but honestly, man, like when you say, and this is a little bit of tough love, I hope, like, take this the right way. I love you, man. We just gotta keep it real. Like saying sometimes I feel super motivated and then one day I stop for days and weeks, the hell's that that's completely unacceptable dude like why do you stop for weeks like you don't just stop just do it the next day if you miss a day i don't want to hear that you didn't do it the next do it just do it like you have to get it into ingrained in your brain that there's no like oh like i had a tough month so i can't work out F that like work out just do it chris asks what would be your top three shoes of choice to jump in also what environment do you jump your best in what are your top oh yeah like only top three. What are you talking top about? Top three shoes to jump rope in. Yeah. Dude, I don't even know what my shoes are called. <laughs> I couldn't even tell you the name of them. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, mine would be the Adidas Tubular, the high tops, Nike Cruise, and the Air Jordan Eclipse. Oh, and the environment. Mm. Environment, I, I think we're gonna say the same answer, Dan. I love to jump rope in cities with like dope views of buildings or like rivers or something. Just. I like to feel like I'm I'm in it. Yeah, dude, in I would it. I would I exactly what Brandon said. In urban settings where you can see views and graffiti, and you can just feel like you can get your workout in anywhere. It's this sense of like it's almost like liberation and freedom. Like I can go to the top of where the Golden Gate Bridge is and get my you know get this awesome workout in by looking out over the whole city instead of you know confined to a gym. Jail asks if I don't have a heavy rope, will I still strengthen my core and gain muscle or get lean? Yeah, for sure, man. You don't need a heavy rope. Heavy rope is just a way to add more resistance, but listen, you do the jump rope workouts, you do the four-week challenge, you graduate onto all the other stuff that we teach you about once you join the community. Like, you're gonna figure it out, you're gonna gain muscle, you gotta get lean. Ladies and gentlemen, this episode was brought, brought to you by Crossrope. Um, guys, we mention it in every single video. Honestly, you should just get one. Oh, it's They're beautiful. Like, oh, look yeah. at it. Yeah, it's a company that has like a bunch of different kinds of ropes. This is the agility set. They have speed ropes, weighted ropes. We, we have uh, other videos that utilize some of the different ropes. But just to be frank, guys, they're the best jump rope company out there right now, so check them out. And on Mundo, 10% off too. Oh yeah, 10% <laughs> off. Whoa, salute. Thank you. Yeah, that was Spanish. All right, next up guys, we got Athletic Greens. These are three supplements we work into our routine. If you ever watched a vlog, you probably saw the day in the life. Yes, and Instagram Snap, we're always showing these. We're always showing us consuming them. So we got BCAs you take during your fast. You got the green juice just to help you hit your micronutrients. And you got the protein, help you get your protein out. Like the other homie early in the episode, who was like, yo man, why was I don't hit my protein? Well, you die, first of all. Yeah. But second of all, um, you're not gonna be able to maintain your muscle mass. Guys, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Ask the Zen Dudes, episode five. What's up, bitch? You're a monster. <laughs> Tyler. I'm sorry. All right, listen up, mother We only got one branded rope that we jump rope with. That's a mother on cross rope. If I see any of you mother 
using anything else in the crossroad. I'll personally come to your house and smash all the food in your fridge so you gotta go to the grocery store and buy a whole new kinds of food. Because the jump rope's a great exercise for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> From the top. <laughs> From the top. <laughs> Sweetheart. <laughs> Shit. Stick that in your pipe and smoke it. Yeah. <laughs> Good one.